All right, guys, uh, just for the sake of time, we've given ourselves an hour for this, and sorry for the uh, misunderstanding on the Zoom ID. Uh, it just shows how quickly the world can get cluttered with all the IDs and all the uh, passwords, like, like I've got so many passwords that I need a special page just for all the passwords because I can't remember stuff. But uh, we certainly have uh, struck gold with the topic today. I don't know the course of the speaker because uh, as you, uh, that, that can't be the attraction, must be the topic. So uh, just for the new people joining us, uh, just to, for me to get right to the point, um, Community Chamber of Commerce or Triple C as we like to just refer to it, um, has been going for a couple of years, started off as a local uh, physical chamber, four ways community chamber of commerce, where that's where most of us, even Scotty met us a couple of years ago. And uh, came COVID and very, very quickly, uh, an, a, a, a crisis became an opportunity. And we then managed last year to start to connect with uh, people overseas. With uh, we, we started the trade fair, to more, uh, and we dropped the four ways from the name, so it now just become Community Chamber of Commerce because we're already reaching and interacting with uh, members from many, many countries. And uh, I know Scotty might refer to it, uh, Ivan might refer to it. So Ivan and uh, Trevor uh, and myself are the founders of the Community Chamber of Commerce, and uh, Scotty has been one of our uh, key strategic partners from the word go and very helpful also in the helping to set up our zoom platform and uh, from time to time be the main attraction speaker on a whole lot of topics and uh, he's one of those irritating guys who just keep sending you these beautiful pictures from bali with him relaxing and we are sweating it out here in uh, uh in in the city with all the traffic and all the things but um, we're going to talk about Right at the end, I'll just wrap it up in terms of the triple C. But uh, just before we get into the topic, can I ask all of you, just for the sake of a record, uh, that you click on chat and put into the chat room your name, your contact detail, your email address, uh, cell number, uh, and if you have a website that you want to do, just do that in uh, in the in the chat room. And then before we finish off, a chance to then just. Uh, uh, copy and save the, the, the chat room. So uh, I've, uh, because they, they work closer on this uh, international groupings and, and, and networks, your partnership global there, I'm going to ask Ivan to just introduce Scott and then uh, over to Scott. Great, thanks so much, Jasper, and, and welcome everybody. Yeah, and uh, I'm not sure that, that, that Scotty does actually need a, an introduction, but you know, he's an amazing character, guy full of energy living the life on an island somewhere in the middle of nowhere. I don't know how you managed to get that one right. But, uh, you know, he's talking to us today about uh, LinkedIn is now everything um, and your personal reputation is the platform of future sales. So it's no longer about your company and what you sell and who you are. It's about your personal reputation. And, uh, and Scott is going to take us through this and I'm sure it's going to be a great session with lots of power packed information and energy as always with Scotty. So sit back, relax and enjoy and Scotty, take it away. Yeah, thanks so much, Ivan and Jasper. I love you guys at the chamber. You guys have done amazing work and watching you guys thrive, growing from a small community chamber to an international network. It's just beautiful to watch. Just to correct you, um, you both said I'm going to be speaking today. I'm not going to be speaking. I'm going to be ranting. Those who know me know I like to rant. I'll try not to make it too out there and try to make it as, as specific as possible. But I think there's a few things that have got to be said because I've been in digital marketing for over 20 years. Don't be fooled by my youthful good looks. I've been in this game for a very long time. And the first thing I want to mention, guys, is that we have to just accept the fact that business is not going to fall into our laps. It might have fallen into our laps in the past, uh, but now that COVID has hit, things have changed so rapidly. If you've been watching the news recently, you will have noticed. And this topic is actually follows on from another topic that I've been talking about, which is this notion that Facebook is dying. Like, it's not going to die. It's not going to disappear. It's not going to vanish. Of course, it's too big. But from a small business perspective, guys, Facebook is under massive amounts of pressure. I mean, to the point where you're getting crazy news headlines like Forbes magazine with headlines like this. 
Telegram gains on WhatsApp blunder, discussed with legacy social media. Um, this kind of just vehement attacks that are happening right now against social media and their censorship are being like, it's just, it's just, it's really starting to ramp up. And I don't know if a lot of people know this news story that broke, but do you know that 500 million Facebook users are on sales through Telegram? Uh, Scott, and that's you, me, everybody else. Scotty, sorry to interrupt you. We not sure. your screen. Can you guys not see my screen? Yeah, or what you wanted to show us a picture or something, it just came up blank. I'm sharing my screen, can you not see? Uh, are you sharing the, the right screen? Should be. There we go, how's that? Yes, that we can see, thank you. So much so that if you have a look at the actual news media recently, you can see the Telegram gains on WhatsApp. This is from Forbes magazine, blunder discussed with legacy social media. I mean, we're talking about some quite hectic attacks against social media, and I'm not here to judge. So some of you might believe in the censorship thing, and that's great. Some of you might be anti the censorship thing and what's going on. It doesn't matter. What I'm here to talk about today is the fact that what is happening from a business perspective is we need to get clients in business. So what platforms do we use? Because as we see what's going on in the world, and I don't know if you guys saw this as well, it's literally just broken in it, fairly recently. 500 million Facebook users on Facebook um, uh, are on sale. In other words, if you've been on WhatsApp or Facebook for more than a year, it's almost certain that your data has been hacked and is now available for sale on Telegram. That's exactly, that's what's going on. So you're getting this incredible outrage that's starting to, to hit. And like I said before, I'm not here to judge your opinion on whether you agree or not with the censorship and what's actually going on. But the fact is that people are moving away from these big platforms. People are taking their accounts more seriously. And this is key because what I'm here to talk about today, guys, is this notion of personal credibility. And I know you guys are like, oh, but, I love my Facebook. I love my, I can never, no one will ever le let my Facebook go. It's too, too precious. And I get that. And what I think we're going to start seeing now is we're going to see social media consolidate. And it comes together with a statement that LinkedIn has recently made that some of you guys might have received the email from them. And I'm going to show you that statement in a second. But what's happening is for me, extremely exciting. Because what's starting to happen is people are starting to realize that their social media and LinkedIn profiles need to be taken very, very seriously. You can't just click accept, accept, accept anymore. And these places where small businesses like us used to go to find new business is starting to shift and erode before our eyes. Now, I was vehemently outspoken with regards to social media and the internet two or three years ago. I did presentations in London. And basically what I was talking about was the fact that a third of all internet traffic is fake. It's not real guys. We run one of the largest Facebook groups in Bali and the number of fake accounts is extraordinary. They don't even hide it. No photograph, just some stupid cartoon idiot on their phone. Their, 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 their name is ridiculous, some cartoon character. It's crazy, like what's going on. It's, it's become this kind of automated fake stuff that's going on. And we need as small businesses to really start talking about this in the open, because where are we going to get our business from? And what we're starting to see is the emergence, the resurgence, the old fashioned understanding that said our personal credibility and reputation is key to everything. So how do you bring these two platforms together? How do you bring LinkedIn, which has been very clever, and actually stayed out of the limelight quite a bit and has actually been growing as a platform quite significantly. How do you blend that with this concept of not spam, not hard selling, building your personal reputation? And this is what I want to start to go into a little bit more detail with. So let me quickly just show you what, what they actually sent out um, in, as, as part of the, the LinkedIn initiative. Some of you guys might have seen this. Um, it's definitely gone out in the UK and Europe. It's definitely gone out in Australia. Uh, hasn't hit other parts of the world, I'm sure it will relatively soon. So LinkedIn send this message out. And to summarize, as a reminder, what LinkedIn are saying is it's best to only connect with people you know. Keeping your connections list relevant and personal ensures you have the best LinkedIn experience. Now for LinkedIn to go out and say, please don't accept you know, be more careful, et cetera, is quite a big thing because they make their money from traction. They make their money from volume. But even they are now acknowledging and saying, guys, take your profile more seriously. Start to become a lot more serious about the way in which you portray yourself. And it's really, really, really exciting, guys. Now, what do we do? How do we actually 
take this to the new level? How do we get onto our profiles and go, what do we do in order to take our personal credibility and build it on LinkedIn? Now, the first thing I want to mention to you guys with regards to this is that so many small business owners try to do the impossible. They do this thing called the brand. They create this brand, this company, and they get logos and business cards and all these fancy things. And they're like, oh, I'm just so proud because the curve of the L represents the feminine and the rest is table mountain and all this crap. It, it, it's, it's really nice and pretty, guys. But what you try to do is you take this brand and your personality hides under the brand. And then you try to go against gravity to get your brand into this great cloud that is the internet and all these millions and millions of people out there, but you're pushing it up and you're bashing, bashing it up into the world and it just comes back down every time and it doesn't work. It didn't really work before COVID and it sure as hell isn't working now. If you've got big money, by all means, go crazy. If you've got the money, get into SEO. SEO is amazing if you get it right. We're not saying don't use these platforms. I'm not saying don't be clever in your marketing. But what I'm really trying to get you guys to try and understand and been doing this for so long and, and just really loving the way some people embrace it is if you get your personal credibility right, things start to really happen for you. And your best friend is going to be your LinkedIn direct messenger. Okay, so let's talk about LinkedIn now generally. LinkedIn is amazing because you have this incredible thing called an invite and you have an incredible thing called accepting that invite. And once you get that acceptance, data becomes available of the other person. But as LinkedIn has just said, please don't just accept because what so many businesses were doing before is they were going connect, 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 connect. And some of the more studious were writing nice little messages, but it was cut and paste. Hi, I, I saw your, you, your name popped up in my LinkedIn contacts and I thought that I would connect with you. Guys, that stuff's not going to work anymore. If you want to be seen as credible, stop bashing your brand like this and instead Think of it as a horizontal plane. Stand personally, your personality. Take your personal brand and make that the, the spearhead of your organization. Okay, take that and start connecting with a group of people around you and focus on trust. I've been to so many networking events and they all say, no like trust, no like trust. First of all, people get to know you, then they get to like you, then they get to trust you. On LinkedIn, I'm sorry, I have to vehemently disagree with that statement. No one's, you've got 12 to 15 seconds to get somebody to act. That's all. Because that's how many characters you've got and to convince them to actually act. You have to start with trust. You've got to start with your personal credibility. So how do you do that in 12 to 15 seconds? How is that even possible? And this is where it comes down to the captivating one-liner. You don't have to go and post every day on LinkedIn, two or three times in weeks to build your personal reputation. You need to do one thing and do it really, really well. Direct messenger is your greatest friend. So let's take a couple of examples now and let's start showing you. So this is the LinkedIn message that went out. This is the type of thing that you want people to get to. So get people off LinkedIn as quickly as possible. Use your invitation and acceptance message to get them off of LinkedIn because LinkedIn is so restricted. It's beautiful for getting those connections. It's beautiful for making that initial impression, for building a strong first impression, but it absolutely sucks for long-term relationship building outside of direct messenger. So what you want to do is you want to create something, okay, that looks really good that you click that, get them to click. Okay. Get them to click and get them to view. And here's a couple of examples. And the, capt the captivating one liner is that one line that reaches out on LinkedIn and says, I'm not here to spam you. I'm not selling my product or service, but I understand your pain. It's all about your pain. This guy, this client, and as you can see, it's all about the individual. It's all about you. This guy is selling rugs but he's not talking about rugs. He's talking to interior designers and he's saying that your industry is under attack from deceiving discount bandits and you're losing your commission. He's making these really bold, powerful statements. And amazing lady who's on this, this group right now, Lee, said something so awesome. 
and if leave, you could maybe post that into the chat. You can bring it up later. She said that what the world needs right now is people to make bold statements and bold opinions. We're tired of the fluff. We want to hear people saying, people who know stuff and are experienced say powerful statements. And I love that because that's exactly what this is about. So he's selling rugs, but he's not talking about rugs. He's talking to the pain of the industry that he's reaching out to. This is how you start to build your credibility. You start to create pieces of content that do not talk about your product or service, but gently and softly nurtures them in a way that helps them understand, I get you, you get me, you understand me. Do you see the difference, guys? Do you see what we're trying to do? Financial services CIOs, be honest. Your project managers don't know what they are doing, do they? This is not your normal Google search content, guys. This is bold, opinionated stuff. And what ends up happening, right, is when you connect to somebody on LinkedIn and they go, hmm, 12 to 15 seconds, you've convinced me. This captivating one-liner, you've talked about my industry. It's relevant to me. You know what? I think I'm going to give you the time of day. You look like a credible person. You've got a, a good photograph. You've got a nice LinkedIn background. I've checked you out. You know what? I think I will accept your LinkedIn connection. Or at the very least, I will ask for the article that you're promising me. So you then send them this. And the first thing they see when they click away from LinkedIn is they see your photograph and they see that the individuals you've connected on LinkedIn is actually responsible for a beautiful piece of work that is well thought out, is not clickbait and says something really interesting. This is how you build it. And I know what you guys are asking for and I'll get to it in a second, don't worry. You'll get to how you do your LinkedIn connections and your invitation messages. I'll get that to a second. But before you understand what your strategy is and who, what target audience you're trying to reach, and specifically what the pain of that audience is. And as soon as you started stop spamming people and stop hard selling, and you actually start to talk about their pain, the world changes for you, hugely. Now, another example of content is a video. So I do videos with my clients. You can do a video on your own. You get onto Zoom and you record yourself saying something cool for 10, 15 minutes. Don't make it boring. Maybe make it two minutes if you feel you're waffling. And I'm going to stop my video here for a sec because I want to make a really important point. If you're an introvert and you don't like doing videos and stuff like that, it's absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with you preparing, rehearsing, practicing, get in front of Zoom like this on your own with no one else around, pretend you're talking to an audience and rehearse a really nice two to three minute soliloquy, maybe share your screen and make a little video. Show your audience that you understand your pain. Do not talk about your product or service, talk about their pain. Say to the audience, I get what you're going through, guys. I understand it. And they see you talking with credibility and respect. They see you talking with confidence. That little video is such a powerful way to build your personality and your character and to help people trust you and build your credibility. I hope this is starting to make a little bit of sense, guys, and I hope this is starting to work. And I get that I'm ranting, but I see this happen all the time. And I'm so tired of people, really, really smart, super bright, mega intelligent people coming to me and say, I've just put so much money into Facebook and it hasn't worked for me. And I've spent all this money, it's not working. And it comes down to the reason, that old fashioned reason that says, when you connect with somebody, be genuine and show them that you understand their pain. And above all, and I'm going to go through this in detail now, build a sales pipeline. Okay, so what, do you, what are you guys asking? How do you reach out to somebody on LinkedIn? What is, what is your invitation and acceptance message? You've got 12 to 15 seconds. All you do is you say, hi, John, quote your article. We call it a listicle now. Quote your article. I've just written this article. It's an eye-opening article or it's a controversial article for your industry specifically. I'd love to connect and share it with you via LinkedIn and email. If you overnight change your invitation messages to something along the lines of this, you can reword it yourself. What you are saying to that person is, I'm not here to spam you. I've put a lot of time and effort into something specifically for your industry. I get your industry or I get your job title but I understand what you're going through and I've just written about it. I'm speaking about it. I have the authority to speak on this subject. This is, starts to change the game because you're showing them that you are 
under, and understand you are an expert who understands their pain. Okay. Once they accept your LinkedIn connection, all you do is you send them a link to that article. It's so simple from a messaging perspective, but it's not that simple from a content perspective because you've got to put good content together, whether it's a video like this or whether it's a beautifully designed article, whatever it happens to be, it's you speaking about their pain. And this is the secret guys, target a specific job title or target a specific industry. That is what will get your clicks. If you want to build your character, your personality, your trust, your reputation, nothing says it better than I understand your industry. I had an amazing chat with somebody who was oh, actually a new client now, and he's, he's trained almost 20,000 health and fitness salespeople around the world. And he says, you know who the best salespeople were? Accountants, teachers, and librarians. And I'm like, what? The introvert to type people. Yes. Why? And he says, well, because if you tell an accountant to do 20 invitations a day, he or she will do 20 invitations a day. Won't do 19, won't do 21. Other guys will do like 10, so maybe do 15 a day, all over. They follow the diligent process. And this is the secret to the whole sales process, guys. It's following that diligent process. So what is that diligent process? How do you follow it? Well, once you've built your content and you've built your machine and you've made yourself look really good and really credible, then you can start reaching out with the methodology I've just shown you now. I've got lots of videos and things that explain this on the website. Now you can just start messaging them. Here's your problem. And I'm going to finish off the last 10 minute rant with your problem and your opportunity. This diagram over here is the secret. It's called the sales conversion gap. Okay, guys. So here's what happens. You are sitting on a gold mine right now. And I know a lot of you guys listening to this are already fairly active on LinkedIn. If you're not, it doesn't matter. You'll get, hopefully get active after you watch this. You've got lots and lots of these LinkedIn invitations, right? You've got lots of connections. You've made them. But how do you convert those into customers? Today, I gave you a couple of tricks about your captivating one-liner, the content showing your pain, et cetera, et cetera. And we can expand that and I do so on other videos. But what ends up happening is you get these people that are clicking and they're opening and they're responding sort of and they're saying thanks and they're saying thumbs up and they, they're kind of there and they, they, they're engaging your content, but they are not going to pick up the phone and phone you. Make no mistake, they are not going to pick up the phone and phone you. They're going to sit in what's called a sales conversion gap. If you get this, your life will change. Now, I've worked with enough sales trainers and some of the great ones are on this call already. And what they will tell you is that what they will say is they've worked with clients who for two, three, four, five months don't get much traction. And they'll sit with that client and go, let's look at your sales conversion gap and book off half a day and get on the phone to those people who have followed you and clicked and are engaging with you, but who haven't phoned you yet. And suddenly, bang, they start getting sales appointments because they were proactive. Sometimes it's reach out with a LinkedIn voice message or a LinkedIn message. But that sales conversion gap is where everything lies. This is where the gold is. You have more people sitting in your, gap, in your sales conversion gap than you think. But how do you know that? And I'm going to show you in a second how to measure it. But if you go onto our madge3.com LinkedIn profile, you'll see this diagram and you'll see the article about how to convert LinkedIn connections into calls and meetings. And I use what's called a four step process. I've got a little video on it and there's four steps. Now you need to take this process and tweak it for your own business. You start by sending a LinkedIn direct message, which I've shown you. You then wait a few days. And if they don't respond, you follow up with email. Email is critical. Now, remember you only reaching out to people now, who you know have engaged with your content. How do you know that? Because hopefully you're using our app or using our technology or using our, our, uh, the madge3.com system to help you guys track that. Um, even if you just use the free version, just use the free version, just please track what it is that you're doing. Because if you do not have a measurable sales pipeline, this is gonna fail. And if you don't act like a librarian and follow the diligence, you're also going to find that these people, this gold that is sitting in your sales conversion gap is not going to be converted. But if you follow a four step process or tweak it for yourself and you send that direct message on LinkedIn and you use email, 
and how to send that email and how to word it is also in here. Then sending an email and if they don't respond, look at potentially a LinkedIn voice message. Some people don't like LinkedIn voice messages. It depends on your market. But depending on how you want to do it, um, you can start to do your follow-ups and eventually start phoning them. If you follow this four-step process, you've already built your personal credibility to such an extent and because you're so soft and so gentle and talking about their pain, when you speak to them on the phone or when you leave that LinkedIn voice message or where you, when you write that personal message to them, you're asking them about their pain. You're referring back to the article that you've written. You're referring back to the content and you say to them, in my article or in my video, I talked about this. Is this something you're experiencing? Can we have a conversation about it? So what you're doing, guys, to summarize is you're creating connections then you are creating conversations and then you go into the close. If you master the art of the conversation, holy flip, things start to just open up for you. It starts to change the whole ball game because you're just being soft, you're just being gentle and you're just taking people on a, on a soft journey of really good quality content. And the responses are so different, guys. The responses that you get are, are always just like, you know, thank you, interesting article, great to chat. Um, I appreciate you taking that time. Conversation starters. People will reply to you on LinkedIn, not saying I want your product, but yes, yeah, send me your article. I'm looking forward to it. Or the conversations begin. And that's really what you're looking for. You're looking to create those conversations. And you can create that sales pipeline very, very simply but you've got to do it. You've got to track your clicks. This linkedinarticles.com is actually a little tracking link that will actually track to see who clicked on it. So if you're sending out 20 LinkedIn invitations a day and eight of those actually um, accept, so you send your article or your video to eight people, you can tell which of those clicked. You can see you click. They become your priorities and you can create a little high quality contact uh, uh, database. You can create a great conversations database and you can move them into your deals in progress and you can work your pipeline right on top of LinkedIn specifically. And this is what I want to finish off with before I go into Q and A. What happens, right? Is you sit with LinkedIn, but it's not directly connected to your sales pipeline. So you have this gap, the sales conversion gap. It's really important that your sales pipeline and your LinkedIn are working together but your sales pipeline is about how you close deals, but your LinkedIn is always soft and gentle. So you're slowly working the way through a conversation, through a natural process, but you're measuring it every single step of the way, but you're working with LinkedIn to do that. And the secret is you need to know who clicked, who opened, who actually created um, that engagement with you because they're not all going to respond. They're not all going to jump, jump down your lap and go, yes, I want to speak to you now. That business is not going to fall into your lap, guys. You've got to be proactive and focus on that sales, con uh, that sales conversion gap. And I know this has been a bit of a rant, guys, because I'm so passionate about this right now because I'm so sick and tired of watching such terrible mistakes being made with so much money being wasted, especially during this time. But more importantly, I'm so saddened when I see people with these great LinkedIn profiles and so much much sitting in their, in their sales conversion gap, but they don't know how to pull it out of their gap. They don't know how to follow that diligent process and they don't do that work. And finally, the purpose of this whole topic is about your personal credibility and reputation. You build your personal credibility and reputation simply by not ruining it upfront. Your LinkedIn message, your first LinkedIn message is a good first impression. Your second LinkedIn acceptance message is a great first impression or second impression. You're constantly staying at the top of your game. You're making bold statements. You're never going into this kind of um, sub, uh, what's the word? Um, uh, scared mode where you're going out there and you're kind of saying, oh, I'm too scared. Um, you know, I'm like, uh, I, I, I want to just offer you my product. And if you don't respond, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, it's not like that. You have to stand out and boldly put your personality in front of your brand. Your brand will come along with you. Don't beat your brand up like this. Stand proudly in front, get a good LinkedIn profile, message people, show them that you understand their pain and their industry's pain. Be an industry specialist. It's, it works so well, guys. We get 
on average 12 to 15% click through rates on the captivating one liners. Those messages I just showed you earlier, 12 to 15%. They end up becoming 20 to 25% after a couple of months. That's your click through rate. Your industry average is normally 0.5 to 1%. People don't believe us. And it's just a simple, simple approach. So guys, I'm going to go into Q and A now. I really hope this is just kind of bamboozled you a little bit, which I totally understand, but I hope it's given you guys some food for thought. And I'm going to hand over to Q&A and just see if any of you guys have got some questions or any comments about the last half an hour of hopefully Thank explosive stuff. Thanks. Thanks so, thanks so much, Scotty. As always, uh, captivating. Yeah? Not, yeah. not a one-liner, but certainly captivating. So uh, uh, really fascinating uh, chat as always and, and full of power and energy and lots and lots of great yeah. information. So really appreciate that. Folks, we've got quite a few people on the call. So I suggest two things. Either put up your virtual hand if you know how to do that. Uh, bottom screen of your screen towards, uh, towards the right-hand side and the reactions, you can put up a hand and, and I'll come across to you. Um, or pop a question into the chat box and Scotty will pick it up from the chat, chat box and, and answer uh, direct there. Um, you know, it doesn't really work if everybody suddenly unmikes and starts shouting left, right and center. So if you have a specific question, yeah, stick your hand up and uh, hopefully I'll see you and uh, we'll put it in the chat box and we'll take it from there. So any anybody? Uh, yeah, Tanya, let's go to you. Yeah, so Scotty, you were talking about uh, aligning your LinkedIn with your um, with your uh, your so are you talking about a CRM or is this, is there a facility in LinkedIn that I can do that? Well, yes. So LinkedIn is not very good at that. Um, yeah. That's why we built uh, the My Most Trusted app, which is uh, this little guy, this little floater. This is not part of LinkedIn. This is ours. Okay. So if you want if you want to just download a little Chrome extension that helps you track your pipeline and tracks your clicks, who clicks on what. Okay. Um, my, cool. my Most Trusted.net. So if you just go to my most trusted.net, yeah. um, you'll be able to, you'll be able to pick that up. And there's also a mobile app and your mobile, the mobile app actually pings you if somebody clicks on your link. So when you're sending out those direct messages and okay, someone cool. clicks on it, it'll notify you. Yeah. 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 And you can start that four step process. If you Perfect. do the four step process, it's powerful. It's just nobody, so few people want to do it because we're not diligent. We get roped in. So will just yeah. kind of help you follow that diligence. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you know what? I've struggled here because obviously as a salesperson, you're wanting to pitch <laughs> and you can't do that. It's just a no go and just gets shut down. So, you know, I'm really excited about this. Thank you very much for you and your energy and what you're doing here tonight. It's brilliant. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Tony. You actually bring up a very good, important point. Um, the, the in front of the person presentation is completely different to the getting them in the door pitch. Completely different. They're like, but what most salespeople try to do is because they're so good in front of the person and everybody on this call will probably be really, really good sitting in front of the person you want to do business with. It's where you thrive. Getting in the door, that's very difficult. So what ends up inevitably, inevitably happening is you end up taking the in front of person pitch and doing that to try and get in the door and it fails. Nobody wants to be pitched to. You've got to change that. And that's that process. Um, if you go to the madge3.com website and you can see that article, it'll actually take you through that four-step process to help you do that. It's just about softly and gently saying, I've given yeah. you some content. I understand your pain. I get your industry. If you can yeah. do that up front, you will slowly but surely get those conversations happening. Sorry, darling, what was that website did you say? Mag? Mag3.com. Yeah, Mag3. Yeah, got it. Put it in the chat box. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, um, Leon. And if uh, I recall correctly, you've now also got it on Edge as well. So it's Chrome and Edge. Is that right? Yes, true. Works on Edge now as well. Correct. Yeah. So, folks, yeah, you, you've got the choice of browsers and on your mobile, as, as Scotty says. So you can get it on your mobile from the, the, the Play Store or the iStore as well. So you can you can pick it up from there. And, and to get in, as Scotty said, is absolutely free to kick off with. And uh, yeah, if you want to upgrade later, that's your choice. If you want to carry on with the free version, again, your choice. Work with it. So Scotty, uh, Lee's asking a question, how do you maximize your existing contacts on LinkedIn? Yeah, so the same, exactly the same process. Great question. Yeah, same. So the process is the same. Um, you, you, um, if, you've, if you've already connected with them and they've accepted, so you, the first thing you do is you just go straight to what we call that acceptance message that I showed you earlier, which is, uh, this one here. Okay. Except you will just word it differently. You won't go as promised because you didn't promise them, but I thought you'd enjoy this article and then you put that in. It's got to look beautiful. 
it's got to look really good. That's why your click rates are so high. So you have a, 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 preview, a preview image that looks great. It's exactly the same process. All you do is you share with them your article or video or both because you might do one and then a few weeks later send out another piece of content and you track your clicks. Same process. Soft, gentle, targeting their industry. Great, thanks, uh, thanks, Scotty. And um, I, I've just popped in uh, the the website link into the chat box, so if you need to pick it up from there, and, and you can also just scroll down on that same same page and download Scotty's free book on the captivating one liner as well, which actually takes you through the concepts and ideas. And uh, again, as Scotty is uh, is, you can do it absolutely for free. You don't even have to put your email address in to ask for it. So uh, great content. And uh, no, no hurdles to jump jump through to actually get it. Uh, so thanks again for that one, Scotty. Any other questions? Comments? Yeah. So, um, so Scotty, I run a, I've got like a, a an affiliate program as well as my personal thing on LinkedIn, but I kind of don't get the how to push the the the, the, the affiliate program side of things because everything comes through me. So, how is there any tips on on how to navigate that when you yeah is that is, yeah you get, you yeah, get my question again Absolutely. So affiliate also, if you, I also lump that in um, just generally for other people who've got who want to create a reseller channel. In other words, if you want to have people that refer you business or become resellers of your product um, or affiliate, so they're going to go out and be your evangelizers. Um, that is a very, very important process that you can take. It takes a bit longer, but when you do get it right, it, it's very powerful because now you've kind of almost got business for life because you've got a few people marketing you and out there. Again, same process applies. It's just the way you word your captivating one line is a little bit different. So you need to decide, you need to decide um, who your, who those resellers are going to be because you can't go out to anyone. So if you want, uh, let's say you're in retail, right? And I like using retail because LinkedIn is, it doesn't really work on retail. If you want to sell high heel shoes, probably not, LinkedIn. But if you want to find owners of stores and outlets and online shops who sell retail shoes or will become affiliate for you, LinkedIn is perfect. So you do the same process. You target them all on LinkedIn, you find them and you show them you understand their pain of the industry and you come up with that, that pain point that you can touch on, but you've got to have the captivating one liner. That captivating one liner within 12 to 15 seconds will get them to click. But the process is the same, Tanya. It's, it's going out there and getting them. Great, I thanks. Mark's yeah, got his hand let's up. Get across to, let's get across to Mark next and then to Lee. Hi, Scotty. Hey, Lee. Uh, hey, Mark. Hi. Can I run my captivating one liner past you? <laughs> okay. There are two billion reasons why you should use WhatsApp for virtual networking. Okay, so. Does that work? Why? No. <laughs> The reason why it doesn't work is because that's not about a specific person's or, or individual's pain. You've got it. This is about, you, there's 2 million billion reasons why that's not a, that's not tell them what their pain is. Who are you looking to do networking on WhatsApp? Well, people who are doing networking badly. Well, who could they be target a particular group of people and talk to them about their pain. I've, I've, I've literally, and you can get my book. I've Look, we're, book. We're, we're in a pandemic. We're in a pandemic. It's a shared experience. That's one good thing about it. And networking remains an inherent part of the human condition. We are all hardwired to network. Everyone here, by definition, is a networker. Otherwise, they wouldn't be here. So, that, so Mark, your captivating one-liner is accountants. You're not going to get any business unless you network. Okay, or something like that. That's too general, but um, you, you, I normally take an hour and a half to workshop this with clients. You're putting me on the spot. You've got to pick an industry who needs to go, who needs to get business. And you've got to tell them, I understand your pain. You've got to say to accountants, I know you're introverted. I know you don't like going out. I know you don't like being in front of the, the, the camera. You're more, you, you prefer being in, behind a spreadsheet. But the fact of the matter is, if you don't learn the basics of networking, 2021 is going to be a bad year for you. That's the kind of thing you've got to so say. You, you, to you're saying there isn't a capture all, um, captivating one liner for everyone. You have to do it by industry. Is that what yes. you're saying? Yes. 80% of the time it's industry. 20% of the time you can get away with job titles. So you can say, for example, CFOs, chief financial officers. I want automation and I want it now as a, as a quote, um, something along those lines that got huge clicks on CFOs because 
the pain is, is automation. They want to understand automation. So you can target a job title as well, if, if necessary. But you've got to be specific. I love this, you. Is why, this is why I go to, I speak on this all the time, and there's 50 people, 20 people, 100 people, hundreds of people on these sessions, and like a handful of them actually get what I'm saying or embrace it. Why? Because every single business owner, small business owners, bar a small handful for two years now, do not want to accept the fact that they need to be niche in the way they do their LinkedIn voice messages and pick an industry. Everyone says the same thing. My product is amazing for everyone. Everyone can use me. Two billion people can use WhatsApp. No, you it doesn't work, guys. Okay. But Lee, accept it. Accept it or, I don't know. Lee and Jamie want to advertise. speak. Yeah, yeah Lee, thanks. Lee, thanks, Mark. Yeah, we're, Lee we're and get Jamie. A, get Ladies first, first, so it'll have to be Lee. Okay, Mark, but you have to shut up so I can let somebody else. <laughs> so, yeah. So, Thanks. So Scott, could... Scott, I'm very nervous of your of you kind of just the, the diatribe coming my way because it might sound like I'm I'm trying to push the boundary. So I completely understand and have sat in enough of your talks to know this niche, be specific. Uh, uh, but you did say something a little while ago, and I just want to check it back with you that once you've got your captivating one-liner that is very specific around an industry and or a person, do you only send to those people? Or is it that that same article could actually trigger something for somebody else? Uh, or are you, you just sending specifically to your target market? Um. Yes, so um, that is a really, really, really good question. And um, well done, thank you, Lee. And I'm sorry if, I'm, if, I, uh, if I get a bit upset and put people off asking questions. So um, yes, so basically what happens, right, is when you um, make that decision to go niche, you only reach out to those people on LinkedIn. Don't change your whole business keep your LinkedIn profile. You don't have to even change your necessary, your LinkedIn profile to say, I am a specialist. But when you go after those specific people, absolutely, you only show it to them. That's all who sees it. So you don't, who cares? Like the, the problem is we've been so indoctrinated with social media crap, which says, oh my God, you're not going to believe this. I've got 300 views and two likes and my, oh my God, who cares? What if you only got, what if your article only gets three views, but those three people are exactly the right quality people? That's what you're measuring using this process. That's what you're doing. So yes, you only show it to those people. Business owners don't like that. They don't want to condense themselves in that. And I'm going to quickly give you something that can help you with that answer very quickly because I know we're running out of time. Look at your numbers. If you, if you take a thousand invitations, right? Those a thousand invitations will lead to 300 acceptances. Those 300 acceptances will lead to 50 clicks. In other words, people who've, who've clicked on those that actually clicked on your article and, and engaging with you. In other words, they, they, they're interested or have responded with something quick. That's 50 people you've got in your sales pipeline. Those 50 will then end up into your, you know, 10, 20, 30 deals, how many you need. The point is you only need a thousand at the top. You can go on LinkedIn so niche that you're only targeting tennis coaches in Birmingham and you'll probably find a thousand of them. In other words, the numbers still work, even if you're niche. If you could grasp that, you'll feel a lot better about going niche. Great, thanks. Thanks, buddy. Jamie, let's get across to you. And I think, John, you also unmiked if you were if you're looking to say something after Jamie. Yeah, thanks, Scott. I um, love everything that you say, and it all sounds fantastic. But I wondered, is what's your thoughts on Sales Navigator? Is that something that you'd recommend? Would it really support um, using your system? Yeah, so there's a couple of reasons why you would use Sales Navigator. Um, first of all, you can search by company size, um, which is really, really useful. Um, so the search is, is a bit better. Um, the second um, reason is the good thing with Sales Navigator is you can do a lot more volumes. But if you follow the process I've just shown you, you don't need high volumes. Eh? That's, that's the interesting thing. But it, it can be quite useful for Sales Navigator. Um, I use Sales Navigator because of, of volumes and I have to do searches for clients who use Sales Navigator and who need the, the niche search. But the interesting thing is, Jamie, um, I would say in about 80% of circumstances, you don't need Sales Navigator or any of that functionality. Most of, okay. our, most of our clients use the free version. 
good to know. So thanks. Uh, Thank you. All right, John, across to you. Yeah, good, uh, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm currently being um, led through Scotty's uh, cathartic process. Hi, John. He's, he's, uh, he's, he's beating me with birch twigs and making sure I'm uh, doing the right things, which is great. But just, uh, just one, one question. I, I'm a great believer there's only really two things in, in business, and that's marketing and innovation. I think Scotty's got a good process, but the feel, Scotty, and it may be later in the process that you come to it, that we, there needs to be something to get to the close, some urgency, an, an event, something that gets people to finally make a decision. Um, do, you, do you sort of encourage to set up a series of, you know, difficult in this environment, but uh, um, uh, in-person events that you invite people to. Uh, and, and then going back to Mark's thing, I mean, most people hate networking because they feel very uncomfortable with it. I can't think of anything more uncomfortable than using WhatsApp to network with. It, it's kind of hiding behind a piece of technology. I'm a great believer in meeting people face to face, getting them in a room, understanding who they are and, and letting them come to a natural decision that, yes, my business might be something that they want to uh, solve their problems with. It's John, if you hire me, I'll network for you. <laughs> Sorry, Mark? If you hire me, I'll network for you because you just pointed out quite rightly that there's a ton of people out there that hate networking. It's a bit like public public so, speaking. They... Can I ask the que answer the question quick, Mark? Sorry, yeah, guys, because we've only got five minutes. And, and, yeah. and John, John, you've made a really, really good point. Um, w exactly what you've said, John, is the sales conversion gap. That's what you've just talked about. How do you get them out of the gap? Now, you've, what you've asked, if I've got your question right, is what is that process to get them out of the sales conversion gap. How do you do it? How do you end up getting that close? Um, can I, is Julie, are you uh, yeah, I'm following here. I'm here. Hey, I'm gonna hand over Julie quickly. She's really good at this. We've just been talking behind your back. I've been- Yeah, we <laughs> have. It's all been, it's all been nice. <laughs> yeah, so um, John, I think uh, to, to ask that, there are, there are a series of steps that I take with my clients to actually get them initially engaging. Once we've got that engagement, I'm afraid you can't beat the good old fashioned pick up the telephone and say hi. So what I do, and I, I work with Scott, I'm Scott's sales trainer in the UK for the UK based um, Majestic 3 sort of programs. We take you through the whole sort of program of how you do that, how you reach out. But the wonderful thing when you do that because you've built that relationship, you've got their trust, you've got their credibility. It's not a cold call. It is a, hi, you know, how are you doing? And a lot of people will, um, you know, um, embrace coffee conversations because of that. So it takes away also this hard, um, this, this sort of mindset of, You've got to pressurize people. It's hard sales. It's not. It's just beautifully comfortable. And a lot of my clients that I'm working with don't class themselves as salespeople in inverted commas. Um, but they're finding this a very re um, sort of relaxed process because of the way that we're nurturing the relationships and the, the credibility that the system creates before you make that call. Yeah, yeah. But, but beautifully it's comfortable level of urgency, otherwise will people go on forever never making yeah, it absolutely and and yeah you, you that that's where i come in because i work with people to to help make those calls and and guide them through and train them to do that so yeah that's where i fit with with scott mm. um but it's not just about that it's about the other sort of ways that we interact so got it Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Julie. Um, I know I've got to hand over to the, to the chamber guys to finish off, but I want to finish off with one last thing. Um, and that is, uh, John, you just said uh, it can take months. Uh, do you remember I showed you this gentleman here and he's going to laugh when he sees this video, if he sees it? Um, nine years <laughs> it took for him to become a client. Nine years. So um, it happens, you know, um, it can take days or weeks or, you know, but I tell you what, guys, it, it, if you just don't push people and you just keep there and you just show them that you know your stuff and you build that credibility, it comes. Right, thanks, Thank you, everybody. So I'm going to hand back over to uh, uh, to Ivan and Jasper. Thanks, 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 Scotty. Yeah, and, and um, before everyone drops off, uh, Scotty, have I twisted your arm for the 12th? Yes, you have. 
I have. Same okay. time. So, so, no, diff different time. So uh, 12 midday South African time on the 12th of February. Scotty will be back with us um, on, on your partnerships uh, and we'll get a message out, but I'll pop a link into the chat box now, which you can, uh, uh, you can register on. It's also free, free to attend. Um, it's part of the Your Partnerships Global Network uh, events and so on. So the Chamber is very closely linked with that as well. So we invite you back on the 12th uh, at 12 and, uh, and we'd love to see you then. But I'd just like to hand back to you, Jasper, to wrap up, wrap up the session. So over to you. Uh, thanks, uh, Ivan. And uh, yeah, thanks, Scotty. Uh, uh, full of energy and to the point, like uh, all the comments in the chat box. And thank you all for joining us. And it was quite good to also have our friends from... Uh, your, the, your partners and uh, the networks from overseas. But uh, some questions that came up is uh, who are Triple C? So Triple C stands for Community Chamber of Commerce. Business chat every Friday morning is an initiative by uh, the Community Chamber of Commerce. And we invite the experts in their fields to talk on topic. Uh, and then on the morning, if you join, you're always welcome to join. Uh, you know, people leave their con uh, contacts there in the chat room. So if you put your con uh, uh, connection there in the chat room, do so now. And then before we leave, uh, make a copy of the chat room and then you've got the connections and you can also start that as part of your process. But what if it was such a great topic and you now want to continue sharing the topic? How do you access the material? Well, obviously the speaker will have it as his own material and he can use it in any way that he wants. And the speakers on our platforms are all um, partners and members of the chamber. So if you want to know how to become a member of the chamber, go and check us out at uh, fccc.co.za. Uh, maybe get, uh, Ivan, if you can just also drop it there in the uh, chat room. Uh, so members will uh, get a chance to talk on any topic of their passion because we, we know that a business person is not just business. Uh, we look at the holistic thing. So uh, like Ivan has got a cat there on his lap while we talk. If you're a cat lover and you know uh, things about cat that makes you have a topic on it, but only members will have a chance to talk on their, uh, their topics. Uh, so we've got three kinds of membership, an entry-level membership, uh, which makes us also unique is that we have our own community bank with access to interest-free loans for our members. So if you want to know more about that, that's all part of our entry-level membership. Plus you have access to forums like these, business chat on a Friday, every weekday, Mondays to Friday from 8 to 8.30. Uh, we have access to wisdoms chat. And on Sunday evenings, we have access to a generational inheritance group chat uh, from 7 to 8. So those are your uh, facilities. And then we're also at the uh, standard membership. Uh, we add access to a virtual mall and at our premier membership, we have a virtual board uh, where you can come once a month and we just focus on your business and that's uh, active in your business. So if you want to know more, go and check us out there. Then what's the topic for next week? So uh, uh, you're welcome to join us again. Uh, next week, we will have our CEO and he will talk on the topic, is the trend your friend? So uh, with a focus on where are we in 2021 and the trends, uh, well read, well uh, uh, listened to, he's all sorts of people around the world. So make sure that you join us next week at nine o'clock on the, but not on this uh, uh, link. We will send you the correct link. Uh, just find it. Uh, uh, from our websites and from the friends who introduced you to, 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 to today. And again, to, uh, Scott, thank you very much for a very informative chat. And uh, guys, we wish you a blessed week and uh, 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 lots of business. And let's go and change the world. One sale at a time, one customer at a time, one relationship at a time. God bless.